Hello everyone, welcome to Lucid Mains. Today we are going to discuss about the recent event uh, concerning John Allen Chow and the Sentinel Stripes of Andaman and India's internal security aspect regarding Andaman Islands. So, let's have a brief introduction. The Sentinel Stripe of Andaman Islands came back to media attention last month following the death of an American evangelist John Allen Chow at the hands of the Sentinel Stripe. The Sentinelese inhabit the North Sentinel Island of Andaman Island groups. Before going into the details of the issue, let's have a background regarding the tribes of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are home to several tribal groups. They include the Great Andamanese, Onge, Jarawa, Sentinelese. They are these four tribes belong to Negrito tribal communities. They are present in the Andaman island groups. Then there is the Champagnes and Nicobaris. They are Mongoloid tribal communities. They are present in the Nicobar islands. All these tribes remain animistic in faith. Missionaries have been historically unwelcome in the Andamans. Uh, in fact, the great Andamanis, an alliance of 10 coastal clans, fought the battle of Aberdeen against the British in 1859 and were enslaved and eventually decimated. However, the missionaries has had greater success in the Nicobar Islands, which lie on the ancient maritime trade, trade route between Europe and the Far East. Now, let's see the conduct which these tribal groups of Andaman and Nicobar Islands has had with outsiders and its impact. The contacts with outsiders have proved costly to the tribal groups of the islands. The Antaman and Nicobar Islands were initially treated by the British as strategic outpost and then as a penal colony. Post independence, Indian government used the Antaman and Nicobar Islands as a space to resettle its excess population. This resettlement has caused unexplainable destruction to the life and survival of the tribes of Andaman people because these tribal groups having been isolated for uh, hundreds or thousands of years never had any immunity to common diseases and when these people got such common diseases from the settlers they died out in thousands. A large chunk of the population of the 10 great Andamanese tribes was wiped out due to epidemics caused by contact with outsiders. Between 1998 and 2004, when the Jarawa started to respond to the state, all government hospitals bordering their reserve opened special wards to treat them for infections. The Andaman trunk road, which has cut into the heart of the Jarawa reserve, has destroyed the natural habitat and livelihood of the Jarawa people. Fewer than 50 great Andamanis are alive today. In 2010, Boa, the last of the Bo, a great Andamanese tribe, died and there vanished an ancient language and knowledge. A few months earlier, another ancient language, Kora, had passed with Boa's neighbor, Boro. In December 2008, at least 15 Onke men died after drinking from a plastic container. The Onke, who number fewer than 100, has now abandoned hunting gathering and depend entirely on government help. Thus, we can see that with the conduct uh, with outsiders, the lifestyle, habitat and, and even the survival of the tribes of Andaman and Nicobar Islands has been at risk. And with this conduct, the tribes has suffered unexplainable damage. Now let's see about the Sentinelese tribe. The Sentinelese are a pre-Neolithic people who have inhabited North Sentinel Island of the Andaman Island groups for an estimated 55,000 years and they have remained without contact with the outside world for, most, for the major part of these years. The Sentinelese are the direct descendants of Homo sapiens who came to Asia from Africa. The Sentinelese are perhaps the most reclusive community in the world today. 
they still remain hostile towards outsiders. The government efforts to reach out to them, which began in 1967, were dropped by mid 1990s. And the government announced a buffer zone of 5 km around their island. The North Sentinel Island was already out of bounds for people. According to the 2011 census, the population of the Sentinelese was just 15, though anthropologists like T. N. Pandit who made contact with them in the 1960s put the figure at 80 to 90. This figure seems more likely to be true than the census figures of 2011 since anthropologists like T. N. Pandit are much more authentic sources of information regarding the Sentinelese tribe than the census officials. Now let's see what has been India's approach towards the tribal people of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Jawaharlal Nehru's tribal panchil were the guiding principles after independence to formulate policies for indigenous communities of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Based on them, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Protection of Aboriginal Tribes Regulation 1956 was promulgated. This regulation protected the tribals from outside interference, specified the limits of reserved areas and mandated that no land in a reserved area shall be allotted for agricultural purposes or sold or mortgaged to outsiders. Uh, before going on to the next slide, I want to uh, mention one point. From now on, the Antaman and Nicobar Islands Protection of Aboriginal Tribes Regulation will be mentioned as ANPATR for convenience. A policy of non-intervention was also proposed by an expert committee on the directions of the Supreme Court. This committee submitted its report in July 2003. The committee recommended protecting the Jarawas from harmful contact with outsiders, preserving their cultural and social identity, conserving their land and advocated sensitizing settlers about the Jarawas. Under the Foreigners Restricted Areas Order 1963, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are a restricted area in which foreigners require a restricted area permit to enter and stay. Internationally, the Indigenous and Tribal Population Convention 1957 of the International Labour Organization insisted on an integrationist approach. However, the 1989 convention insisted on a policy of non-intervention. India has ratified the 1957 convention but has not ratified the 1989 convention. However, India's policies has been in confirmation with the principle of non-intervention. In 2005, the ANPATR was amended. Uh, through this amendment, the term of imprisonment as well as the fine for violators were increased. Following further reports of human safaris and exploitation of Jarawas, the ANPATR was amended in 2012, creating a buffer zone contiguous to the Jarawa Tribal Reserve. In December 2014, the Andaman and Nicobar administration announced a change of policy from hands off to hands off but eyes on to protect the Sentinelese. But Following pressure from the Andaman Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Andaman Association of Tour Operators in August 2018, the Home Ministry dropped the reserved reserve area permit requirement for visiting 29 inhabited islands until 2022. These relaxations in the name of promoting tourism runs the risk of introducing the indigenous people to diseases against which they may not have any immunity. Apart from this, these relaxations possess a high probability for the infringement of the uh, privacy and the lifestyles of these tribal people and these tribal people might become mere spectacles for the tourists. Now let's see what was the Chow incident and its implications. John Alan Chow, an Ameri American evangelist, came to the Sentinelese Islands with an aim of converting the islanders to Christianity. The Sentinelese 
being isolated in the island for thousands of years may not have immunity against even common diseases. Cho, through his adventurism, has made the survival of the tribe at risk. He might have given the Sentinel, Sentinelese tribe uh, exposure to certain pathogens to which they might not have any sort of immunity. And another side of this incident is that the fact that Chow was able to evade India's surveillance asked searing questions on India's internal security apparatus. So let's see what lies ahead. Chow's tragedy underlines the need to re-examine security and tighten vigil around North Sentinel Island. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands is a critical asset for India's national security. Located just northwest of the Malacca Strait, the archipelago offers India control of a chalk point and this is in fact a maritime vulnerability for China. So India need to beef up its internal security apparatus. The recent relaxations in restrictions in the reserve areas will disrupt the lifestyle of the tribals of the islands. And people like us need to change our perspective about these indigenous tribal people. Our belief in the need of civilizing these people comes from a misplaced notion of superiority. These people, in fact, have a rich and varied diet which is comparable to the diet in any industrialized society, minus the junk food. And they do know to live in harmony with the nature. They were intelligent enough to foresee the tsunami and to move to higher regions during the 2004 tsunami. Their society is much more egalitarian than ours. An anthropologist who compiled the languages of the Andaman tribes found that there wasn't a word to express rape or sexual violence in any of their languages. This shows that their society is much more egalitarian and the women in their societies have much more equal role to play than the women in our society has. And the hostility displayed by the Sentinelis too needs to be analyzed. The fact that many anthropologist visits were received with a friendly approach by the Sentinelis shows that their hostil hostility came from their perception of what are safe and what are not. And the change in the shape of their canoes and the increased usage of iron in their spears suggests that there might have been some form of contact with outside world. And further, India needs to sign the 1989 convention of the ILO and implement its conditions of non-intervention with the life of its tribal people. And last but not, not the least, the so-called civilized people like us need to forego our patronizing views of aborigines like those living on the North Sentinel Island. If these people have shown every indication that they want to shun contact with us, then they have, have good reasons for it. So that's it for today. I hope everyone had a grasp of this uh, matter in hand. Thank you.